Hey guys, got a phone call from Ed Smith. He told me he's working on a flathead Ford. And we got in a conversation about how there's a few tricks and tools that make everything about working on a flathead Ford or Lincoln very much easier. That's a combination. It's not just tricks and it's not just tools. It's a little bit of both and how to use them. And so Ed asked me to come and document him. Uh, he's got one that he's part way through. And I think he's uh, willing to share some knowledge and wisdom from his experience. And I'm hoping there's enough detail here and information to be actually very helpful for a lot of people far and wide. So please follow along if you have any interest at all. We occasionally do get um, questions related to building engines, mostly Lincoln Zephyr engines, of course, but other flathead questions, and maybe this will be helpful. I don't often say this, but please do remember to uh, give us a like, help us along with the channel if you can, and if you uh, find this very informational and helpful, uh, you might want to send it along to some friends, who knows. Anyway, here we go. Okay, so let's talk, what are we going to do here? What are we, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about uh, an easy way and a little better way to grind the valves. Okay. Maybe some... Uh, a little easier and better way and simpler way. People think that the Ford flatheads are so difficult okay. and to, to work on and the valves are so difficult um, and they're really not that difficult. Okay, now what's the so, rumor as far as why do they think it's difficult? They don't know how to get it apart. Okay. And they were, really was that, in those days there was no videos or something to tell you that to, how to get them apart and everybody has their own idea. Sure. And I have my own idea about it. Right. And uh, again, my first flathead I took apart when I was probably about 16 years old. Wow, it's been and, a while. Uh, and it was that when I got done building it, I took it to the Ford dealer um, and, uh, in Edgerton, Ohio. I took it to the Ford dealer and had him grind the valves and stuff. Okay. And I really never got it started. Oh. Uh, a little story about that, that I took it home, put it in the car, and come to find out I did get the distributor in wrong. Ah. I towed it, the tractor around through the front yard until it started and, and then went bang a couple times and blew the oil cap up in the trees and by the time I got it took apart, one piston was completely gone. Oh, wow. That was a lesson learned, That huh? was a lesson learned. I went back to the Ford dealer and scolded him. Right. And he told me, he says, you got the distributor in wrong? I said, yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> timing to, is important. I had, I had to admit my guilt. <laughs> he said it backfired so much it broke the valve off. Wow, wow. And the valve took the piston out. Right. Galled to the cylinder wall beyond repair. Oh. After I ran it for a while to try to get it to run right. Right, yeah. So the next day I called J.C. Whitney and Woskowski in Chicago in order to Chevy adapter. So I fixed that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so since then I've done several of them and I've learned a little bit better way how to do it. Sure. Okay, so, so what we so have here is a V8. Yeah, this is a 53. 53, okay. Yeah. That we've overhauled it. I'm just getting ready to put it back together, so this would be a good example of right. something that's clean. And, and I've already got this much before I put the rest of it together. We're going to take a look, have a look okay, at it. Okay, so obviously the whole bottom end, the crank assembly is all put together. Yes. Okay. This happens to be one that's 100 over. 100 it was over. 80 over when I got it. Okay. So now the bore's 100. Okay, so you're making that and, work. Yeah. And um, so... Just having a quick look around here. Some of the things that we do yeah. is um, things we put these plugs in here to stop the heat from getting in the carburetor. They're 5 8 freeze plugs. Okay, so what would have been there? This is normally? exhaust. Okay. Exhaust goes and heats the carburetor. So this is to warm the carburetor, yes. but you don't really need we it? We don't need it here because we're not in cold weather. Okay. And now the new intake manifolds are all got designed where they, they don't heat the carburetor. Right. Even okay. the new Chevys and stuff. Okay. So that's anything. that's the first thing we noticed. Yeah. Okay. So then, then what else? when we get done, yeah, I'll take I'll take it apart after a while. So okay, we turn on to drill these holes in, in the in the lifter galleys here, all these little holes. So those weren't there. They were they were not there. Okay. And it does oil the lifter a little bit better because this is all splash oil in here. Okay, right. So right now it will splash those lifters in, but that's the place where we put our Allen wrench in there to hold the lifter. Oh. So we can adjust the valve. Okay, so that hole serves two purposes. Yes. Ah. So, okay. But then, then we'll get into that a little bit better. So, okay. and here's one here that if I could 
put my wrench on here okay. and then stick the Allen wrench in that hole, which I'll demonstrate that okay. in a little bit then. Uh, so, What's the significance of the yellow marking? Uh, that's because I've already adjusted the valves. Oh, so that's just to let you know you did that it. I've, I've did each one of them, okay, yeah, so they're I all done, you. yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, and some of the things we'll just kind of skip back and forth here a little bit. Sure. Uh, is if uh, some people think it's difficult to change the camshaft in a, in a flathead. Yeah. And I usually don't put this together until I'm done. Okay. Because I don't need to turn the crank around and around and around every time I'm adjusting the valves. Oh, okay. And, and you're forth. not worried about figuring out the timing or keeping time together? There's no, it's not necessary. Okay. Because the valves don't hit the pistons. Ah, right. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, so of this course. one here. And then one of the tools that I use a little bit, uh -huh. but not too much, is this fancy tool here that everybody has. And this is the old Ford tool that the fork's on the end to get the valves out. Okay. And I really dislike this tool, okay. except a pry bar to stick in here and turn the motor over or something. <laughs> All right. So, and the, one of the things a little bit is, uh, if you really want to change the camshaft in one of these, yeah. um, and didn't want to do too much else, you right. can always pry this valve up a little bit. Okay. And put a 3 8 dowel pin under the valve. Just a wooden dowel. Wooden dowel. Under yeah. all the valves. Okay. So it just, which just keeps them out of the way. Keeps them out. Just, so then all the valves are, uh, have these wooden dowel pins under them all. Okay. Then turn the engine over. Okay. Push the lifters all this way. Okay. Pull the cam out. It, that's amazing. With the, with the engine upside down. Yeah. Then. Put the new camshaft after you put it in, all back in again. Take your pry tool and push just, the lifters back down, take it up, just and put the thing back again. The, yeah. And you're ready to go without taking all the valves and springs, right. all that stuff. That's off, a lot of work that you just. Just to change the camshaft. Right. And that same trick works in the V12 Lincolns too. Okay. Very good. So, any of the flatheads, you want to change the cam without just without doing the lifters or, yep. or taking all assembling the thing. This is a good motor now. You, yeah. You just don't like the camshaft. Sure, okay. You That's... want a bigger one or a smaller one. Okay, right. Yeah, and of course you get done yep. with the camshaft you put in, you go back and set the valves again. You adjust, okay. You adjust the valves, yeah. Very so that's good. a little trick that people say, well, I, I can't change the cam. Right. Because I don't want to take all the valves and springs and stuff Maybe out. it's a lot easier than they think, huh? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah it, it really is. Okay. So, that's uh, very interesting. Yeah. So let me go back to the 100 over. So that's that's not a big problem to you do. You can usually, I think, go 125. Okay. Right. Yeah. And they're th pretty thick cylinder walls. I've never seen one go through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On these, I always use the old... Thing. Some people see these. This is the old ring compressor. Yep. Old. They actually will compress all the rings. The new ones are thin and they'll repress the one oil ring and they've got to change it again to do the top rings. I see. Because the, the pistons have four rings on them. Okay. And this will cover all of them at one time. Wow. It's the old ring, yeah. Pretty then the neat. next thing that if you were going to do that, I'll show you a piston here in just a minute. I'll yeah. show you why. Here's a piston that's got all those rings on it. So it takes something like this big to cover all the rings at one time. Sure it does, yeah. So you can push it right in without uh, having the rings pop out and try to break a ring. It's then the next thing okay. is that somebody asked me the other day about having a... Uh, what do you do if they've, they've, they've relieved this block? So they cut down here in the slings and move this, remove this material here. And this worth about 10%. Okay. And a lot of motors in high performance, you see the guys do that. Okay. And I think the correct way to do it when your block was empty is to put your machine chop tool, mark this with a head gasket, and cut about 80 thousandths off of this, this area right here. Okay. And they do it with a router. Really? A, a, a wood router with a bit on it, nope. so it sets flat. Oh, okay. And you can see through the router where you're cutting with a bit, and yep. it grinds it right off and does a nice job. Interesting. Of course, you can set the router bit at 80 thousandths, and you take it all at the same time. Huh. The next thing is, the guy has asked me, well, how do you get the ring down that hole? Well, this is gone. 
the other day said he took the motor apart and was rebuilt and four rings broke. Whoa. Because the guy didn't know how to get that ring past because the ring compressor stopped here. Right. And if the ring hangs over here, then it it's going to break it. it. Yep. Okay. Interesting. So a little bit of the secret there is cut a tin can up. Okay. This is a Coke can. Uh-huh. And you put this in here and you go over that thing, over your rings, over that certain area and that over the rings like okay. this. So it's like a partial sleeve and with that partial be a way sleeve to call it? that sticks down on this part, on the top part where you remove this and that was the rings will slide right in. Okay. This is real thin. When you get this in, the rings you can just pull it you out. Can, okay. You just wow. oil this up and it will last a piece of can will last maybe three or four pistons. Okay. And it will start to look different and you throw it away. Start and, to shred up and time can. to do another yeah. one. Yeah, do another one. Yeah. So that's a good way to get rid of that. Some of the guys I seen the other day says, Well I'll use a couple feeler gauges. Yeah. But the feeler gauges would be four or five thousandths thick. Okay. How and thick is that tin can piece? Probably three or four. Okay. It's really, really flimsy. Right. So that's a good way to get them through that, that area, past that relieved part. Right. And the rings will slide right on in. Right. Yeah, I, I get your point. Yeah, in yeah. this particular example, the relief isn't cut in this cylinder wall. It isn't on this motor. Right. That's what I'm saying. On this particular yeah. motor, we it's don't not. have that. It's yeah, not. Yeah. But, but that's how to do it. Yeah, it's just how to get it through there. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. A little secret there. Man, oh man. Then when we grind the valves, yep. Uh, of course, we ha always have the motor. I would put it on a stand like this, on a bench, and I would set it up straight up and down. Okay. I would put some dye on it. You can see I put dye on this whole motor before I ground it. This is before I had the pistons in it. Okay. I'd have dye in here so I can see where I ground the seat. Okay. And this motor here is a 239. So then we have some tools here. This particular tool is a more of a factory, old okay. tool. And this is a snap on that puts it on. This tool here centers it in the guide. Okay. And also in the lifter hole. I see, so it keeps it all lined so up. So it keeps it lined up. And this is the only tool, and that's, some people can make it perfect. But this will give you more accurate yep. of going through there and center it on both upper and lower to grind your seats. Okay. And I even have one made for a Ford 60. Oh, wow. That's and I had a friend of mine that. make this. It's got two tapers on it. Okay. So this is a Ford 60 has a little bit of lifters and a little bit of guide. Okay. So now I can grind the valves seats on a Ford 60 model. That's a small, the smaller V8 version. Ford 60, 37. 38 Ford 60 oh, okay. motors. Yeah. Yeah. They used in motorcycles and whatever they did, midget cars, and it was a Ford 60. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were doing that, yep. of course, you put this in. This is the handle that kind of snaps it, and I think this is all. Yeah, snaps it down in there, puts it tight, pull, take the handle off. And of course, you got this sticking out of it. Yep. And you'd always use a spring. And when you put your tool, to grind the seat, you put this on you, and you never run this on the, on this on any kind of a seat. Done grinding any valves, even today, unless we have a big machine back here, a sunner machine that we do with three angles, and that's a different thing. But then the spring, you just push this down until it touches the seat. Okay. And as you get done grinding, it pops up off the seat instead of letting it sit there and grind oh, on the seat. All right. Okay. When you're already done with you the seat. You want to lift right off when you're done. You lift it off. So yeah. okay. It only wants it to touch when you're pushing it down. And of course, if we had the motor tipped over sideways, then you're more apt to push this zone sideways because the motor's sideways. Right, right, You want right. to make this straight up and down and, and do your grinding straight up and down too. Sure. So it gives you a lot better seat. I sourced so many of these apart from different people and the seats were not ground right. I don't know who ground them, right? but they weren't right. Yeah. And so then it you can't have to go behind it, them. And it can't run, make it 100%. And you always put the die in it, and you can see the, exactly where your narrow seats are at and do a good job. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, and when we get done doing the motor, before we do anything, I've got a, a, one of these 
stone brushes. Okay. And we always grind through here, buff them out on the block when we get done machine that. Okay. That cleans the lifter bores and the seat, brushes them all off the debris out before you start assembling the motor and grinding the valves. Okay, right. Just to stuff. do a nice good clean. Yeah, a nice clean job. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Very good. Now, what about actually grinding the valves themselves? Is there? Uh, but that's what you're basically using that tool. That's what's grinding. Yeah. That's grinding grind the seats. Okay, grinding the seats. We take the valves over in a, in a valve grind seat machine. Kind of, we okay. usually run 45 degrees. Is it one 45 degree cut and that's yes. it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unless it's just real wide and have another 30, you can top them off and make the seat a little narrower if you want to. Okay. Because anybody grinding the valves would know that. Yeah. Right. So okay. And the valves are all the same. Uh -huh. This this menorah person has this has Chevy valves in it. Okay, what does that mean? That means they're Chevrolet exhaust valves. Oh, Chevrolet, okay. Yeah, the same thing, but uh -huh. they're a little long. Okay. So we take them over here and just stem grind the end of them, take a few thousandths off of them, and make them the same length as the original Chevy, the original Ford valves. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So it's not like you have to buy an expensive Ford valves. Okay. Um, these are a little bit more uh, difficult to use than an original Ford valve. We're going to take a, some valves out of this motor since they're all back in. Okay. Uh, just an example. Yeah. So then uh, I have this special little homemade tool. This is a big long screwdriver. Okay. And you bent the end of it. This is already bent. Okay. I think so. I might have bent it. Ground a little notch in it right there for some reason. Okay. <laughs> then we turn it around. They did all this. Oh my goodness. So wow. that's bent up a little bit and ground some. Notches in here and over here, and I welded a little bit on the end, a little, uh -huh. a little step on there and things. So you ended up making and something yeah, exactly special the tool. Shape yeah, this it. goes in the port here. So okay. this is good on intake valves. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is go in the port here with that little tit, and I'm going to push that guy down. Okay, in here. Okay. There's a. You see that little lock in there? Yep. I'm going to just push that valve down with that. And then Simply you can pull that out. Take that right out. I can put it back in that way. Okay. And do everything else. So now I'm going to just take the whole valve out. I'll just get down underneath here. And there's the whole valve, stem uh -huh. and all. Now our new gasket sets from Best Gasket. Okay. Has a round O-ring here. Yeah, I can see that. The other ones were square. Ah. And it's hard to put a square ring down that sharp hole without right. tearing some of the O-ring up, the seal up. Right. So there's where we've ground the, the seat yeah. and we've cleaned all that bore. Mm -hmm. And that's how easy it is to take an intake valve out with that, that tool. That really didn't take too long at all. Without that. Now this normally, you'd have to jam it in through the valve spring, which I hate that. Right. And then the hooks on the lifter. Or make hooks on the guide yeah. with a couple of circles and try to jam this in there somewhere. Yep. Pry it up and get your fingers in there to put that. Yikes. And then you've got a clip back you've got on. got the tension of that spring working against yeah. you, don't you? Yeah, and with the seal and yep. everything else. Right. It's just uncalled for. I got you. Yeah, you well, have it a. It can be so much easier. You have a good system there, so. Yeah. That's how easy it is to come out. I'll show you a little bit on this particular motor, which is unusual. Okay. Um, so this particular one had a weird set of lifters. I've never seen a lifter like this before in my whole life. Hmm. Our lifters, the new ones, are look like this. Huh. So now they I can look very put, different. I can put my Allen wrench through that little hole, yep. through this hole, and hold that lifter and adjust it. Okay. Yes. And that, okay, that's why, you, again, you drill that's those holes, you can put, do for these new lifters still right there. Yeah, yeah new, put the new lifter. I can adjust them what I want to, right to the thousandths, yep. and then pull the lifter out, pull the Allen wrench out. Allen wrenches are hard, yep. so I don't have to worry about putting a screwdriver or a piece of wire in there and cutting it off. Right, you don't want to leave anything in there. No, you don't want to leave anything in there. Right, right, right. So this lifter here, come on, this motor here, I've never seen anything like it before in my whole life. Okay. It actually has a half inch wrench on top of it okay. instead of a quarter inch, seven sixteenths like they do. And this lifter has no place to put the Allen wrench. No, right. This has to be, a, again, my life, I've never seen a lifter like this before. Really? Wow. So the original way to adjust this, and people 
talk about that. Here's okay. the original Johnson key. Okay. Or Johnson tappets. Okay. There's a right and a left-handed one. Okay. And it goes in this hole and hooks in the next lifter. Oh, okay. So use the, uh, the next door lifter to... That's how it holds the lifter from spinning. Oh, okay. I see. Now you get the seven six wrench on there, and you can't adjust it anyways. Yeah, it's so tight. You yeah. still can't get you the wrench no in there. Right. <laughs> Even if, if you could. Right. It just don't work. Right. Then once you do, it breaks the little tab off. Oh. The little tab's broken off. Yeah, yeah. So now the guy says, well, I have make a, a spanner wrench. Okay. Okay. Then here's another tool that somebody came up with some time ago. Okay. It's a little better, which yep. hooks in two holes. Okay. And you can almost get your wrench on there to a adjust piece it. of the wrench, huh? A little piece of the wrench. <laughs> I see and that. And that goes in and, and each one of them blocks so you can adjust the valve. I see. So we know, and that's a good way to rip them off too. Yeah, those can break. So now you got no tool at all. Right. Here's an original lifter. It has nothing. It's just a solid tin can. Right, okay. We don't use these at all. Okay. When these were that way, to adjust the valves to get 12 thousandths, you had to grind the seat okay. to lower the valve uh -huh. or grind the end of the valve off. Right. Until you get 12. Okay. Then you'd have to put this valve in that hole yep. and go to the next one. Take it a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we don't throw the tin can away. Right. So this one happened to be, if you come up close again, yep. I had no way to hold this. So I ground a notch in it. Oh, yeah, why not, right? Yeah, just oil. I mean, yeah. there's no oil pressure there. Right, okay. So then this so Allen wrench to hold on to. fits right in there. Yep. Very good. So this is the way I made this set of lifters work on my motor, uh -huh. and I can adjust them with it. So we'll put the... It's got, okay. I got grease all over me from the lifter, so we're going to put it back in again. Uh, you're working on an engine, you're allowed. Yeah, to get a little dirty? Yeah. I don't like dirt. <laughs> and we're going to turn this over again. I'll put that valve back in again then. Okay. So We'll see you do it. So now the original Ford valve mm -hmm. had a edge on this valve, on the valve, so this guide wouldn't go up. Oh, really? Yes. The Chevy valve don't have it. Okay. So this guide will slope up and down, and the keys, the two locks will come off the end. Two little locks on there, man. These are the same locks on here as Chevrolet V8. Okay. It's the same size valve. Mm-hmm. A little lock would look like there was a pair of them in there. And that's what, that's what holds the... That's what holds it together? Yeah. That's what's on the end of this valve, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to, with this all done, we already adjusted the valves one time. We're going to shove it down in there carefully. Yep. Push it down there. Take my tool. I'll go in here. Push the guy down the hole. Let's see if I can capture that there. There you go. We're all done. Oh, you already got it. Okay, yeah. good. Let's take a look. Yeah, there they are. All back in here. All the keys. Yep. There they are. Excellent. Now I'll explain to you. I can't use that tool on the exhaust. Okay, right. How is that? Why yeah. is that? So we'll try an exhaust here. What's the difference between the intake and the exhaust? Well, the intake, I can get down these ports. Oh, because the intake ports are right there. Right there. Sure. Exhaust, the tool don't work on the exhaust. Okay. And if I really, if a, if a Ford V8, if it turns over, get a, a used one, if it turns over, and they say you can't get it apart, the first thing I would do is to turn it over, put wooden blocks under all the valves. Right. All of them, turn it upside down. Push the lifters up, pull the cam out, and then turn around and turn the upside down and take all the lifters out. Okay. Now I have no cam and no lifters. They're all on the bench. Right. Now if I take the valve apart, there's no lifter. So the valve spring and the retainer and everything will go through the lifter hole and fall on the bench. The little retainer, the spring, is smaller than the lifter board, so it goes on the bench too. Okay. So now you have a valve and right. you have a, a, some guides. Right, right, So right. that's all you have to do is get the valve out of the guide. Interesting, so okay. On mine then, take the little spring compressor. Okay. And I would put this on the exhaust, as you can see here. I'm gonna just stick it under here. Push this down. 
and take the spring off and take the little guy, little two little keepers out. Okay, do it that way. Yeah. Okay, I see. Once I get the keepers out, get the magnet, I fish the keepers out of it. Okay. Now the valve comes out. Right, okay. And I have the valve spring and the retainer. And the valve spring goes through the hole. So now I've left the valve spring out, valve out, all I have is the guide. Right. I can push the guide on down. Sure. With a, maybe a socket or, or something. Or, and just hit it a few times and yeah. take the lock out. Yeah. Now you got the whole exhaust taken apart. Right on. Once you get the part, you want to put it back together again. You put the cam in it, the lifters in, put the valve in with the spring. Now you got the two locks you want to put in. Right. You take this tool here, stow it in there on okay. the exhaust only, pull it up again like you would any other late model engine. And I take this tool here, a little secret here. Oh, okay. There's magnets on this. Magnets are handy sometimes, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> so now I have these two locks. Yep. And if I pull this thing up, there's the two locks exposed, the valve. Okay. I take these. Oh, interesting. Together, yeah, they'll stay it, in place while you're it, trying to put them down in yes, there. Yes, and put them right down the thing there, under there where they're supposed to be, clamp it, and let the spring up, and yep. we're done on the exhaust. Interesting. Right on. Very good. This tool here was an aftermarket tool, mm -hmm. and basically it was made to put cl clips, put these locks, and maybe a flathead Dodge. Oh, really? 4950 uh -huh. was back in there if you want to do a valve job in the car without taking the motor out. I see. So yeah. these are put That's the, how you do it. Put the little locks right on there like Look that. Look at that. Pretty cool. That's wild. That yeah. is very cool. Thanks for Give showing me you little that. secrets like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes just having the right tool just makes all the difference, doesn't well, it? Well, yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. and in this case, knowing that you need to get the right tool and knowing how to use it yes. as well. Yes. Yeah. It's, just, it's fairly easy. Yeah. It don't take any time at all to adjust the valves and and whatever it is. Yeah so, yeah, so you've already told us adjusting the valves, you can hold them in place with the Allen wrench with yeah. your setup here. And turn them here. I turn them up like this a little bit, put the Allen wrench in the hole. There's yep. my nut. Yep. And you can turn it and adjust them exactly where I'm. Turn it back down again, a half a turn. You know, half a turn. Valves closed, set 14, 12, okay. 12 thousandths here. Turn it back over. Where are you measuring for that? Between the valve and the lifter. Okay. Now between the end of the valve and the end of this. Okay. Yeah. And so you're, you're yeah. just reaching in there with a feeler gauge? Or? Yes. Feeler gauge is right here. Oh, I see. There it is. A little bend on the end. Yep. Makes okay. it go around the corner a little better. Yep. Yeah. And that's all you it need. It goes in here like this and make sure you got a little... Just there. the right amount? Yeah, right amount. Excellent. And you're ready to put the heads on it? Almost. Almost. Okay. Yeah. So some of the tools, yeah. That's fantastic. So now we'll go back to... And they want to... When you drill the holes... Yep. In the head, I usually do this soon after I get the motor tore apart before I start machining because you end up with shavings. Okay. And uh, I was taught a long time ago uh, about any time that you machine a motor like this. Yep. And you run it on a machine back here, a boring bar. Yep. Or something with a motor running the boring bar that you magnetize the block. Really? Yes. A slight amount. And you have to demagnetize the block, and you have to demagnetize the cylinder heads when you're grinding them on any kind of machinery. Because I guess the filings will stick? They will stick to it. The fine f f filings will stick to it forever. Wow. You can't blow them off until you demagnetize it. Okay. And to demagnetize it, you put your magnetized machine on and leave it on. Okay. Magnetize and pull it off. And that takes it the magnetic. And that takes the magnesium away. magnet part of the block. Now you can wash it and clean it. Wow. So you uh, have even, an electromagnet hanging around here somewhere, yes, do you? Yes, we magnetize this twice. Okay. And the first one we first get it, so we don't start machining the block that's cracked. And then after a while, through the machine shop, we'll take it one more time to make sure. And usually the cylinder walls. Uh, you're supposed to clean these bores because it is a threaded cut. Yep. And you should clean these with hot water and soap. Really? The soap will get all the material, little shavings, out of the pores. Good. So we get done, I take a paper towel, uh -huh. paper towel here, 
-huh. and uh, put a little oil in it. And let it set for a while with oil. Okay. And take it and clean it with a paper towel. And I'm ready to put the motor back, yeah, put good. the pistons back in it. Yeah. Wow. So this tool here is just a regular thing. I point yeah. it on the end. And then you can get in here and center punch those holes. Okay. When I you know, center punch them all, different angles, it don't matter. Right. But I know if I center punch it, I can drill it with this bit. I said, well, I have a little, a little friend that goes down there and drills those holes. <laughs> Small. Right. But I can drill them right through there. And it don't matter which angle. No, as long as you can hold it. As long as I can get in it, yeah. Okay. It's fairly easy to get in here with the Allen wrench and your wrench and your screwdriver or your feeler gauge and yep. set the valves. It don't take any time at all. Right. Yeah. Okay. That totally so makes, yeah. Even yeah. to a novice like me, that makes sense. Yeah, I it makes a little sense. Yeah. Little. Right. This is fantastic. Yeah. Sometimes on the exhaust, uh, let's say I'm going to put the guide in the exhaust. Uh -huh. Again, I can't get in here. I'm going to have this spring down here, okay. and I want to put this. I want to put the valve and push the guide down. Okay. So we, I should have showed you this before. So okay. if I'm going to put this, I'll put the spring in. Okay. And then with the and the guide yeah. with the rubber O-ring on it. Right. You and then that. the valve is loose. I can take the valve out okay. and put this tool I made. It's about an inch long. Okay. It's a thick material, slotted. So I put this over the valve guide, okay. over the valve stem, uh -huh. put the valve on it, and then I can put this bolt here in the hole. This is in the valve now. I could have done that. And then take in my tool okay. and push on this valve like that with this tool underneath it. Okay. And that pushes the guide down and I can put the locks in it. Ah, got yes. you. Okay. Yeah. Very good. That pushes the locks down, put the lock in it. Now I have the valve, the lock, and the spring, and the retainer. All I have to do is take the C-clamp and put the two locks on it, and I'm done. That's all there's to it. Yeah. That does the exhaust. Yeah. And the intakes are already in with this tool. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that covers the exhaust, and then you're on your way. On your way. Excellent. Turn it over, adjust the valves. Yeah. You're all set. So this is a little tool here that's yeah. a little... When you need it, that's exactly yeah. what you need. A little, little piece of pipe and cut it off. Yeah. There. Could be a little longer, because right now mine shoves them down far enough with that tool. Uh -huh. I can put the locks in easily. So now we're going to fix the other problem. Okay, what's that? So this lifter yeah. is a brand new lifter. It's impossible to adjust this the way it's made. Okay. I'll take it apart. You buy these new lifters. Okay. And uh, of course, they're probably not made in the United States. Probably not, okay. And the first lifters we've seen like this, and years ago, came in a 9N Ford Ferguson tractor. Oh, okay. And they yeah. were adjustable. Yeah. And a Ford Ferguson tractor has half of this v V8. The valves, the pistons, Okay. It's in that four cylinder, it's a four cylinder, so it's Ford yeah, tractor, 1950, half, okay. 55. Yep. Yep. They came with adjust, adjustable lifters. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. Better than those tin cans, <laughs> right? So we always ordered two sets of lifters for a 9N tractor. No kidding. They were about like, thirty-seven dollars. Yeah. For a set of lifters. For, so we put two sets and a V8. Yeah. Now we got adjustable lifters. Excellent. Yeah. And that was not available factory. Well, they didn't know for V8s then. Yeah. They would, somebody didn't, didn't recognize that they would actually fit in the V8 and you could adjust them. Yeah. Interesting. So Johnson soon come out with this lifter like this and with that tool. Right. Okay. So these are not, probably are not made in the United States. Okay. So I have this little tool right here. It's a quarter, quarter inch uh, keyway, yep. key stock. Okay. I'm going to put it in the vice here. Excuse me for that vice, but it's quite used. <laughs> Maybe a little. A little time. used, yeah. <laughs> and right now, I need to make this lifter basically the same size as that one. Okay. So how are you going to do that? Well, we're going to take this, and there's no way impossible to get that screw to go down there. Right, because you've got that rod in the way. No, 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 no. Or it's what? got nothing to do with it. It has... 
Look, I can hardly move it. Wow. That'll be good to move that. Oh, wow. It's, okay. it's so That's tight. stiff. Let me move my tool up a little bit closer here. Okay. And this is, I've had guys come to me and said they broke their tool. I hope they didn't put these lifters in the car and try to adjust them. Oh, yeah. And then decide that it's impossible. Right. These are made with two screws. It has an interference thread oh, between them. Oh, interesting. That's what that's, locks it in. That's why you said it can't screw in anymore. Yeah, you can screw that in. Maybe one turn, uh -huh. it's impossible to screw it anymore. Right. You'll right. break your wrench. You'll brisk that key thing off there. Right, it's just not gonna go. It's not gonna go. I've never seen one do that. I had a customer one time about the lifters and he said he screwed up three or four lifters. He got a hold of the people that sold him the lifters and they sent him four new ones free. That was nice of them. So then he come to me and I says, give me the lifters, the whole set. Yeah. Let me fix them for you. They don't have to be extremely tight. They don't hold the wheel on. Right. The front wheel. Right. It just goes up and down. Sure. They just need to stay not, where they're put, right? Yeah, just stay where they're put. And only those on that lifter, they were snug, but that's all you need to have is snug. You don't have to have it with 50 pounds right. torque on this bolt here. Right. So we have to do something about this. Yeah. So what do you do? Yeah. So, and, and again, to get it to screw that low, yeah. that much, I had to screw it down there maybe 50 thousandths. Okay. So we're going to cheat a little bit. Okay. Let's cheat okay. a little. Okay. So we're going to go in the other room. Okay. okay. Follow me. Okay. Let's go to the other room. <laughs> Can't wait to find out how this happens. Got lots of tools. Yes. So we're going to grind the threads right off of that. Okay. We're going to give it about one third turn. Grind them off again. Another third turn. And grind them off again. So there are three times I've taken the threads off of that. Okay. Let's see how this works. Let's see how this works. Mm -hmm. Put a little assembly lube on there. Yeah. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt because I'm going to get a bigger wrench. Okay. Longer handle. Okay. Because I hate to work too hard. That's plenty snug. Plenty snug. Before it was impossible. Let's see how we're doing. We don't need to get it close. Yeah, we're getting real close, aren't we? Still about that much more. Yeah. You'd like to start where that one's at, and then you don't have to spend so much time in there. Right. Plenty snug. I think oh, it's good right enough. There. Nice. Without <laughs> that, people that buy these, I hope you all take my advice. Right. Please. You will be happy, happy, happy. Yeah. Boy. With it, without it, I've tried it without it. I've actually broke sockets off and bent my wrenches, bent that, and messed up the holes here, right. trying to adjust it down to where it's reasonable so you can assemble the motor. Right. And be pleasant wow, about that, it. Wow, yeah. that is so effective. It's so, and it's snug. It's, right. This is a snug. Actually, it looks more snugger than those in there right now. Okay. There's no lock washer or anything to it. It's those two references, yeah. Right, excellent. Yeah. Wow, that is fascinating. Yeah, it's really one of the things that I like to show people. Yeah. I hope they enjoy the video. Yeah. 
And, uh, and most of my videos are published by you, yep. Barry T's Garage. Yep, that's right. And, uh, and we do more. I've got to do one shortly with a Chevy V8. I'm looking forward to that. I'm spending about a couple, three or four hours on a Chevrolet block. Okay. Just trying to, uh, don't make it faster, but makes it live longer. And it's easier. I've uh, won a lot of races with Chevrolet blocks. Yep. Over the last 50 years. You have. And, uh, a lot. All around the all around the United States, and with our dirt track cars and stuff, with our Chevy V8s, and and then was more than more than successful. Yes, very with, successful with our, with our Chevy V8s. Yep. And uh, they don't uh, maybe they're not the fastest. Sometimes they are, but sometimes they they finish the race. Yeah. If you finish the race, that's a big deal. Kind of important. Kind of important. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, well, Ed, thank you so much bit for taking us through this. Now I'll put the. I'll time this back again here. Okay. I'll mark it and mm -hmm. turn on and I'll put the gear back on it here and tighten up all the bolts and, right. and uh, we'll be ready to put the, the heads on it. And This particular motor gets a single four barrel. Really? Okay. That one there is a 239, a 53 motor. Gets a, it's got an Iskaderian camshaft with a Mercury crank. Oh, That's really? a four inch crank. Okay. That's a 40 over. Uh -huh. And we're going to put aluminum heads on that and two four, uh, two carburetors. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so you got so that one underway also. Yeah, and underway. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Wow, this is some fun. of the. Uh, some and of by the, the way, for anyone watching, some most of, the, of this will also apply to all the Lincoln V12s. Also, yes, right? it will. Yeah, yeah. Mo almost every bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On the V12 Lincolns, yeah. And then uh, on the Ford flywheels, this is the early flywheel. Uh, you might check that out. It's got all this weight on it, and it's such that the pressure plate goes in here, and it would take about a nine inch clutch. Okay. And it's so thick, this is heavy. That is heavy looking. And it's a huge flywheel, mm -hmm. but it only takes a nine inch clutch. <laughs> so uh, we discard these, uh -huh. and we put this flywheel over here on them. This is a much lighter flywheel, and that's a made later model. Sure. This will take up to 11 inch clutch. Yeah, you can see this. So now you area. put the yeah. bigger motors in them with the more horsepower, and you definitely need a 10 and a half or 11 inch clutch. This is primitive. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but it can't be that difficult, my, my point. Yeah. It's not that difficult. Right. You have a few tools, and yeah. it's fairly easy. And now a little bit of instruction to go yeah. with them. And the, the tools are inexpensive. And right. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so yeah. much, Ed. This Very is good. fantastic. Yeah. I love doing this. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Okay. My pleasure. Okay. It's, it's been a minute. I'm back with uh, Ed Smith, Five Star Engines. And when we left off, we we're putting the valves in. And stuff, that's and right. Putting the valves adjust in. Adjust the valves and things like this. And so here we are. We got put, put the heads on it. And Ed will rock, or no, off and the heads and intake. And this is all a customer's motor of a 46 Ford pickup truck. Oh, okay. That's and, what's uh, going to. It had some problems. and. So we went ahead and fixed it, but the original stuff off of it. So we changed the camshaft and and uh, bored it out a little bit more. This snap, so we bored out a hundred over. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, turned the crankshaft because he had run it with no oil pressure. It had a flunky oil pump on it, which is it's okay. It's the first one I met. It's had an adapter below the oil pump. Okay. And they plugged the oil pump so it pumps the oil out of a a, a, har a larger hose. Okay. Out to the outside of the pan, okay. and goes through a remote filter, like a pressurized sure. filter, like a Ford filter screwed on a maybe a transadapt aluminum adapter, okay. and then goes into the engine. So this motor here will filter all the oil. Right. It okay. all has to go through the filter and pressure it back in the engine. With the old can filter, it really only oiled filtered about maybe ten percent of the oil. Oh, that's not much. No. It wasn't pressurized. It had a small fitting in the back there, same, oh. almost the same place here, and it, uh, so it wouldn't affect the oil pressure, but would still squirt some in the filter. And those filters, then it just ran down gravity. That's why the filter was mounted so high. Ran down the gravity and went in the oil pan. So now we know what went wrong. So if you let it set overnight, yep. the filter the whole thing would empty. Gotcha. Any of those flathead Fords did that. And so you start up the next morning, you didn't have oil pressure, First, fuck a couple minutes until the uh, 
the oil pump yeah, filled that like filter back up. It's like you're dry starting it every time. Yes, kind of. <laughs> so we don't like those filters at all. Some people put them on because they were on there originally, and it looks kind of cute, but it didn't do anything. Ah. So I'll show you a little bit about this hose that we put on it. Okay. But we don't have the, the, the remote filter on it right now because it's on the truck. I see. From the customer's truck. So okay. we just bypass it. And All right. Sure. And this one starts up and runs 60 pounds of oil pressure at idle and, and oh. really is a good mm. oil pump. So Very we had good. to do a little bit with the adjustment on that. Apparently. Thing. He's ordered a couple new water pumps for it, and I don't have those. Okay. So we'll put them on later. We can't put water in So we're not going to run it very long? No, we're not going to run it very long. Okay. But it, uh, it has the carburetor on, so it's fairly easy to adjust. Maybe a little easier than for somebody and uh -huh. instead of two carburetors or three. Sure. But some people like the two and three carburetors because mm -hmm. it looks nice. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so a nice big four barrel yeah, probably works pretty good. Yeah, it's probably a little carburetor, maybe a 500. Okay. Uh, Holly carburetor. Give it a little gas here and pump it. We're going to run our oil, our water, or I mean our gasoline through the pump just like it would be a normally. And so this would be the same thing as the gas tank. So, oh, yep. Okay, okay, we'll start it up then. And we've actually, in the block, we've plugged off the heat risers. And this one because we don't want to have heat the carburetor. Oh, right. So we drove plugs in, I think, the other yeah, day. I think we other... mentioned, you mentioned that. Yeah. Right, right. So this carburetor is not getting any, any heat. Right. So it warms up a little bit and we'll run fine for Arizona. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So That's it's a little cold mean. nature, but man, it looks it, good. And you've got, so this is all dressed up with what the customer had on it. This Before? is what he had on when yeah. he brought it in. I you can come you. around and I'll show you this hose thing. Yeah, let me thing. see what you did. Because they put a fitting in the oil pan. Yep. Through that hose, and it comes out right here in the oil pump. Ah, all right. I and then it goes that. around here, and we're going to push it right in here through the main filter. And okay. So that's just, and then there's our gauge here. So we're yep. going to oil the, so this hose here will now fix to a oil filter on the side of the truck. Okay. So that's what we're talking about with the oil filter. Right. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So that's going to fix so, that problem. Yeah. That, this motor happens to have one of the new gear reduction starters on it, too. Oh, right. Those are great little so, starters. It's a 12 volt. This is running on 12 volt. Right, Powermaster XS. Yeah. yeah. So you're very happy with those starters, are you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. The other ones are sometimes we usually run a 12 volt starter on, on, uh, I mean a six volt starter on 12 volt. It spins it over faster, and they'll they'll, they'll live. Yeah. Right. If okay. You got a good starter. You don't have to change in order just to get 12 volts, but some people do. I see. This happens to have a set of headers on here. Yeah. This made by, but somebody what back those back east. It says Reds. Premium yeah, headers. Red's headers. It's got the phone number on there someplace. And yeah. Seems like I a nice it. fit of it there. Look at that. Those are yeah. very nice. They look yeah, good they and look they sound fun. good too. Yeah, they do, yeah. Sounds really great. So. Well, Ed, thanks for finishing the story here. Yeah, we're ready to deliver it. This Make ready. the customer happy. Got to have those happy customers. Keep them coming. Yeah, thanks. Great to visit you. This is great. Okay, thanks. Guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for all your support of the channel. It has been growing better lately, and we're, I'm thankful for that. Stay tuned for the next one we do. Thanks a lot.